Thank you. Well, I'd like to start by actually going back about 130 years to when the Panama Canal was starting to be built. And that was a major project involving a lot of people, as you might imagine. And in the first eight years of constructing the Panama Canal, some 20,000 people died of mosquito-borne diseases, mainly malaria and yellow fever. That's a lot in about eight years. Now we come forward to the current day, and we've had 130 years of scientific advancement, 130 years of major endeavor, World Health Organization initiatives, how are we getting on? Well, I think in the global battle of man versus mosquito, we're still not doing very well. We've still got about 200 million cases of malaria every year, and we've still got about a million deaths. But I'm going to turn our attention now to another mosquito-borne disease, which a few years ago, pretty much no one would have heard of. And this is something called dengue fever. Now, dengue fever has grown very rapidly. Um, the symptoms of dengue fever uh, can be anything from a sort of flu-like symptom up to hemorrhagic fever, bleeding from the eyes and nose, shock syndrome, and death. But it's most commonly known as breakbone fever because you feel as if your bones are breaking. Um, it's a strange virus, this one, because there are four types. And if you're bitten by a mosquito with one of the types and you pick up that infection, healthy people, you will recover. You have a, may have a pretty nasty time, but you will recover. But if you're bitten again by one of the other three types, the symptoms will be much, much worse. So recommendation number one is don't get dengue fever, and recommendation number two is don't get it again. Um, and actually, dengue fever has now overtaken malaria in terms of the number of global cases. And it's overtaken malaria in terms of the number of people living in endemic countries. So it's now a major health threat. So let's have a look at the mosquito that spreads dengue fever. And there she is, Aedes aegypti. Now, some mosquitoes will bite birds and animals and humans, this one has an overwhelming preference for humans. Absolutely overwhelming. And this human is called Derek, who likes photographing mosquitoes and gets bitten quite a lot in the process. This mosquito lives in and around the home. It only actually flies about 100 to 200 yards. It needs to be near you all the time. It loves big sacks of humans full of blood to feed on. And it lays its eggs in little containers around the house. Bird baths, flower pots. Um, bits of uh, blocked gutters, anything like that. So when it rains, mosquitoes will lay their eggs and uh, you'll get a population increase. Um, so how do we kill this mosquito? Because we need to kill it. Because with dengue fever, there's no medication and there's no vaccine. So if we can have the next video, please. Oh, sorry, we'll go back. No, stay, stay where you are. Um, this mosquito has spread around the world. You can see the dark brown is how this mosquito has gone in the last couple of hundred years, and it's taken dengue fever with it. It transports itself around the world through, via humans, actually, through, mainly through goods and freight. And you may wonder why so much of the world is brown, where the mosquito is, and dengue fever hasn't actually covered all the ground. And it's largely because of two reasons. One is it's not being reported very well, particularly Africa. And the second is, it's only really a matter of time. Uh, give you a nice little example. Um, uh, Aedes aegypti, the insect, first came into Madeira in, nine, in 2005. First time it was reported. We've got this mosquito now in Madeira. 2012, they have 2,000 cases within a couple of months. So where the mosquito goes, the virus will actually follow. You just need someone with the virus traveling to see their grandparents. Um, or their grandchildren. So now let's see how we kill this mosquito. Yeah. Um, mosquito goes from egg to larvae to pupae to adult. The larvae and the pupal phase, you can see here, um, both of them, they uh, are in water. So the very first way of killing them is put chemicals in the water, poison them. And that can be very, very effective, actually. Um, you need to be obviously very careful what you're going to use if that water source is also a human drinking water. Um, but this can be very effective. The trouble is, in an urban environment, you just cannot get to every single puddle, every bird bath, every block gutter. So that's 
limited. And here's the other way of doing it. And that's called fogging or space spraying. And you're going to put your chemical into a medium like a fog, a diesel fog, and you're going to fill the place with chemicals. A um, couple of issues with this. Uh, the first, I think, you can probably see. And the second is it really doesn't work very well. So no one really tries to get a mosquito population in, in a town down. What they do is they fog a room, they fog a house, they fog an area. And that's the best we can do. This is state of the art. Can you beat it in most countries in the world? So let's see if we can do better. So we've taken an idea by a colleague of mine. We've taken some funding from Wellcome Trust a few years ago and developed an idea. And the idea is based on two fundamentals of mosquito biology. And the first fundamental is only the female bites you. The male doesn't. Has no interest in biting you. Doesn't have the mouth parts to bite you. It's just the female. And the second part of the story is that the male is very, very good at finding the female. Wherever the female will be, the male can find her. Now, you may think this is not restricted purely to the mosquito species, but it's certainly very, very helpful. Now, normally, when a male meets a female, you have lots of offspring. Um, a mosquito, fem single female can lay up to about 100 uh, eggs at a time, 500 in a lifetime. But if we release Oxitec males, where we have engineered them to be sterile, then there won't be any offspring. Now, it's actually not true sterility, because what we've actually done is genetically engineered, genetically modified uh, males, strains of males, to have a gene so that they, the offspring die. And they die before the offspring become um, fully functional adults, for a reason I'll explain a little bit later. So that's what we do, actually. We release males because they don't bite. They're quite safe. They mate with the wild females. The offspring don't survive. And if we do this enough time with enough mosquitoes, we bring that population of mosquitoes right the way down. So this is quite interesting because if you sum up all of the companies and all of the people trying to do this around the world, you come back with one, which is us. <laughs> no one else is doing this. So it's taken a long time for us to talk to regulatory authorities to develop the protocols, the tests, both internal and external, to satisfy people that this is both safe and environmentally uh, beneficial. Having got approvals, community engagement is absolutely critical. And I could spend hours on this subject, but I won't. Um, here, in, these, these are images from Brazil, where we're working with fabulous uh, people in Brazil. There's a social company called Moscomed, and we're also working with the University of Sao Paulo. And they do a quite brilliant job at getting the community together, having talks, showing them the mosquitoes, talking it through, bringing in health officials. It's been a major effort. It's not intuitively um, the, right, the, the, uh, the right sort of solution. I want to control mosquitoes by releasing more of them. So you do have to explain it. But actually, the idea of sterile mosquitoes, people get very, very quickly. And here is the largest mosquito factory in the world, Moscomed. It's up in the north of Brazil. It's, the, it's one of two factories in, uh, mosquito factories in the world. The other one is just south of Oxford, and that's ours. But this one is the one owned by the um, state of Bahia. And in there, we have people who uh, will separate the males and the females. They will grow up the larvae, and then they will have the adults resting in cages, and they'll grow up huge numbers of mosquitoes so that we can release males. Now, there's a bit of a trick here, because you might say, well, hold on, that chap just said they were sterile, and if they were sterile, how on earth are they producing millions and millions? And the answer is because if you put an additive into the water in which the larvae are, then you restore their fertility. And we've done that because this needs to be a cheap technology. We need to be able to take it around the world. We need to be, this to work in the hands of uh, sensible, well-trained people but if a technology relies on a whole bunch of Oxford PhDs running around the world, then it's not going to do very well. So very simple manufacturing process. And then we come to release. So let's look at release. Now, these mosquitoes, like, like the wild type, they only fly about 100, 200 yards in their lifetime. So you have to imagine your town, 
Where are the mosquitoes going to be? We've done a lot of science on this, but broadly the mosquitoes will be where the humans are because they don't fly very far. So you can get a truck, you can go down the street, and at the moment you can take a pot of males and you chuck it out. And the males will fly off and find the females wherever they are. The less females there are, the more efficient the system. And your truck can go down the street, and ours goes at about 16 miles an hour, which is an interesting number, but that seems to be the right speed, um, until you've covered the area. And so it's just a question of log lo sorry, logistics. And here's, and here's the truck. Um, and it's nicely, brightly colored. Transgenic ADs on the outside. A fantastic loudspeaker system. It's got the most annoying jingle um, that talks about we're releasing uh, genetically engineered mosquitoes. But that, <laughs> um, it may not work in every country, but it's very effective in Brazil. Um, works very well indeed, um, and a lot of community support. And this is where we've now got to. We've done a number of trials, uh, both in Cayman, in Malaysia, and uh, here in Brazil. And this is what the current project, this started in June. This is a town of Jacobina. Uh, it's about 50,000 people, and our objective here is to take the number of uh, these mosquitoes down so we can stop dengue transmission in this town. That is a huge undertaking, and that's exactly what we're doing at the moment. Now, what I haven't told you yet is whether this actually works. Now, you know, there's a presupposition that it's going to work. Um, but let me show you the results from our last trial. And this is in a town called Mandakuru. So you've, um, we're using a, an overtrap index, so we're counting um, presence and absence of uh, mosquitoes in traps. And in 20% of the traps for the, in March, you've got um, uh, mosquitoes, you've got these larvae. As we start releasing, that comes right the way down. And by the time you get to the tail end of the year, you've got pretty much nothing left. And that little blip over in January is one trap with three eggs. That is a 96% reduction in the mosquito population. Now, I can't find good figures on what you can do if you try the same thing with insecticides. The only thing I can find is a study, and I won't actually release, say who released it, because I'm not sure I'm able to, but um, in a very advanced country, with helicopters um, putting down larvicide from the air, from mist blowers, um, they managed to reduce the adult population by 15%, 1 5. And we've done it by 96. And if you didn't do that in your neighboring areas, those are the control sites. Um, so these are the neighboring areas that butt onto this. You can see what happens. You've got mosquitoes all the way through the year, and then at the tail end of the year, when the rainy season comes, boom, mosquito numbers bounce up. Um, so it's a really astonishing level of control works very well. Um, now, when you're introducing a, sy a system like this, an approach like this, you've really got to balance all the elements. And it's no point having a, something that works really well if you're not actually looking after safety and the environment at the same time. Because we are in a world where we need to look after um, approaches. We need to develop sustainable approaches. And when you're thinking about this thing, um, to my mind, you want something that's very limited in scope. You want it to be targeted, and you don't want it to persist. None of us, I think, in this room want anything to persist. You, don't, you think, well, are we going to start something here that we can't stop? Because that's a key thing. And with these mosquitoes, um, they're very limited. They only mate with their own species. They don't mate with any other species. They're targeted because the male does the work. Um, it's also limited in scope because they die, the offspring die. It's a, very much a dead end. And you can actually see and that, the, that the, neither the mosquitoes you release nor the offspring persist in the wild. Within a few days, there is no trace. They've gone. They've died. That's it. And there's a third element, which for me is possibly even more important than that, and that's control. Now, I don't mean here control over the mosquito. I mean control over the process. We're doing something this is new. And people will say, well, what if this? What if that? How do you know? Can you prove it? Um, so what we've also introduced is a fluorescent protein into these mosquitoes, which again is inherited by these larvae, who then go on to die before they reach adulthood. If you look, under these if you look at these larvae um, under a fluorescent light, 
um, you can't distinguish it under normal daylight. But if you look at it under special light, um, you can see they're red. So you have a very, very, very simple way of detecting your mosquitoes, or mosquitoes which have been fathered by an Oxitec one, to ones that haven't. So you can monitor in the field, you can see how effective you're being, you can actually predict um, how long it's going to take you to get control, you can see if the operator has missed a part of the town, um, and more than that, you can see how long they live, how efficient they're being, where they've gone, and you can see the gene coming back out of the environment. So finally, what's our vision? And we are often asked whether what we're trying to do is eliminate all the mosquitoes in the world or eliminate the species. And the answer is no. It's gone too far. It's gone all the way around the world. It's not really possible to bring it back. Um, but actually, if you combine our method with um, the best practice that's out there, I think we can drive the mosquito numbers down in major cities and towns to have a major impact on this disease and hopefully drive it into the background. Thank you very much.